Hi everyone, it's Monday, November 21st, 1233, 34. Sorry, a few minutes late, just finish up with patience. And uh, so we bring you the Ask Dr. Khan show. So welcome, if you're first time watching the show, I want to welcome you. Uh, this is a weekly show where I, on Facebook Live and also on Snapchat, I give you information that's going to help you get healthy and stay healthy. Keep in mind the information that I give you on the show, it's not stuff that you can just look up on the internet. It's not stuff just like on WebMD. It's not stuff that your doctor would tell you, but this is certainly in the scientific literature, the latest research, and this is stuff that we're implementing in our office to help people with chronic health condition. My name is Dr. Peter Khan. My practice is focused on autoimmune disease and thyroid conditions, and people usually come to me after they've been to you know, all kinds of different doctors. They've been to the Mayo Clinic, nothing's helping, and they swing all the way to the other side, then they try natural alternative medicine, it's still not helping, and then they end up in my office. So I'm only telling you that because there's a lot of people who has lost hope or they get jaded because, you know, it's just another thing, you know. The only reason you feel that is because the approach was wrong. It was not like the product's bad or the medication's bad. It's because they're treating the wrong thing. And I think in chronic health condition, you want to focus on the big picture. What's the actual root cause? What's the actual mechanism instead of just taking a product because it sounds like a good idea? And that's what I try to do in the show, and that's what I try to do with my patients. And that's why we get great results on our website at AskDrKhan.com. There are over 100 video testimonials of different people who's gone everywhere, done everything, tried everything else. Nothing's working until they come to see us. So we use this unique and innovative approach that I have created called Neural Metabolic Integration. This is a treatment program that combines functional neurology and functional medicine and really look at the root cause and treat the whole person, both the brain and metabolism. Okay, so, uh, so each week I bring you a certain topic that's going to help you. And really, this is kind of like a snippet of what I really do with my patient, okay? And uh, certainly I combine all the pieces that I talk about, and this show has been going on since, what's it, this episode 30, 30th episode, check it out. So we've been doing this for uh, over half a year, and uh, the response has been awesome. For those of you who's following, I really thank you all for following me and sharing the video and liking it. By the way, give me a thumbs up if you are watching me live right now. And give me a hearts if you feel like this has, been hel has helped you in understanding about chronic condition, how to improve your health. Give you some thumbs and hearts. Awesome, great, thank you so much. All right, so uh, Nick, today I'm gonna talk about autoimmune disease and glutathione, okay? And uh, this is a really important topic because this is basically most of, most of the people with chronic illness. Just so you know, there are about 50 million people estimated in America that has autoimmune disease. Now that's a lot of people. Just to put it into perspective, the number of people with heart disease so autoimmune disease, AI, okay, is 50 million people. Guess how many people have heart disease? The number of people with heart disease is about 22 million. So there's a lot more people with autoimmune disease than heart disease. Guess how many people have cancer? It's about 9 million. So if you add up heart disease and cancer, which gets all the press, it doesn't even add up to the number of people that have autoimmune disease. So this is actually a really common condition. There are over a hundred different named autoimmune diseases and really it just depends on what part of the body it's attacking we'll give it a different name. But the underlying theme is that it's autoimmune. Autoimmune means your immune system, auto means self, means your immune system is attacking your own tissue, right? Your immune system is supposed to attack bacteria, fire, viruses, fungus, yeast, foreign compounds, but now the immune system turns a gun against your own body. That's a very bad scenario. And once it starts attacking your own body, it'll continue to do so, meaning it'll spread. So that means you can have more than one autoimmune disease. In fact, most people have multiple autoimmune disease, although many of them don't have them diagnosed. So you go from doctor to doctor, and doctors confuse why you have symptoms everywhere. I can't diagnose you. I need to give you one label. I need to pigeonhole you into one category so I can treat you with a drug. And they can't do that because autoimmune disease doesn't show up like that. <coughs> so today I'm going to talk about autoimmune disease. Now, one of the reasons why autoimmune disease is so difficult to diagnose or most medical professionals don't understand is that there's different stages of autoimmune disease. There are actually three stages. Stage one, stages of autoimmune, okay? Stage one, this is called silent autoimmune. When I say AI, it means autoimmune, okay? Stage one is silent autoimmune. This means that you may have elevated antibodies 
but you actually have no symptoms. A lot of people walk around with silent autoimmunity. They're not diagnosed yet, but now their body's starting to attack itself. You can actually measure that on blood by measuring antibody, which is your immune system tagging specific parts of your body for attack. It's starting to, it's brewing, but it hasn't turned into frank symptom or disease yet. And medical doctors don't typically check for antibody against certain tissue unless you have a symptom because by definition, medicine is symptom treating. See, the healthcare system that we have in this country is broken. It's symptom masking with drugs and surgery. Medicine comes down to two things, drugs and surgery. And that's appropriate for certain health conditions like acute infections and trauma. But certainly for chronic condition, drugs and surgery fail most of the time because it does not address an underlying root cause. So what that means is if you don't have any symptom, they don't check. So you can have silent autoimmune. Then if your condition continue to progress, it'll lead to stage two, where in this place is called autoimmune reactivity. That means now your body is starting to develop antibody levels and you're also having symptoms and even loss of function. This is when you get brain fog. This is when you get fatigue, perhaps. This is, if you have MS, you may start to get some weird numbness tingling somewhere or a little blurry vision. This is when you have celiac. You start to get symptoms of bloating and GI issue, malabsorption. This is when you have, you know, uh, perhaps rheumatoid arthritis, and then you get achy joint. But it's not so bad where your joints actually destroy, so you don't get the rheumatoid nodules and you don't get the, the damaged cartilage where your hand gets, you know, uh, mangled. So stage two is you have reaction. Obviously, you have lab tests that shows positive to ANA antibodies or you have ESR, erythrocyte, erythrocyte sedimentation rate is high, and you may have thyroid antibody that's elevated. But at this point, maybe your hormone levels still look fine or your cartilage is not completely damaged. So they say, well, you know, we don't know. You, maybe, you know, maybe you have lupus, but we don't know. Test not confirmed. You know, average diagnosis from the time that people have onset of disease to the time of diagnosis, like how long do you suffer before a typical medical doctor diagnose you with autoimmune disease? That time's about a decade. It takes about a decade. To, so that means you feel horrible. You feel horrible. Nobody's telling you why you're feeling horrible. They can't diagnose you until finally one day it gets bad enough to where they say, yep, yeah, you got this. So it's, it's not good, okay? Stage two is when you have symptoms, okay? You have symptoms, but again, no diagnosis yet. Stage three, this is actual autoimmune disease. This is where they actually start to see something on some kind of imaging, like for example, MS. Now they see placking in your brain on myelin sheath. They actually saw something. Okay, you have organ destruction. Your brain's actually destroyed. We're seeing plaques. We're seeing some spots on the MRI. Now you have MS. While here, they say you don't have MS, which is completely stupid because you already have MS. You have the symptom of it. You have auto antibody elevated. Your immune system's attacking your body. It's pretty darn obvious, right? I mean, you tell your doctor, I feel horrible. I have all the symptoms. They tell you, well, your lab test is normal. Like, what does that mean? Like, we don't treat lab tests. We treat the person, right? Lab test is a guide. Lab test is not God. Lab test is just a guide. It still takes a doctor who's trained to think about the lab test and to look at the whole patient's history and examination result and then make a correlation. The lab test is not everything, folks. Medicines come to the point where a doctor just rely on lab tests. They don't think anymore. They don't train doctors like they used to. Back in the day, doctors think with their brain. Now they just rely on the test because that's what the insurance dictates. Show me a proof, show me a test to document your, t your, your thing. So it's like all med legal reasons rather than what's good for the patient. Okay, so lab test is not everything. So this stage is where they actually see something on lab test. Then they can give you a label or a diagnosis, which then they'll have a drug to fit that diagnosis, to pigeonhole you into that label and they have a drug for that instead of treating you, the person, and what's causing you to have the problem in the first place. Remember, a diagnosis of autoimmune disease does not tell you what the root cause of the autoimmune disease is. The diagnosis of disease have nothing to do with the actual root cause of disease. In fact, most of the, the, the medical diagnosis is just a bunch of Latin that describe your symptom. <laughs> your symptom is not the root cause, folks. 
Treating the symptom is not treating the root cause. Describing your symptom like fibromyalgia, what does that mean? It just means fibrous tissue or muscle hurt. Well, duh, you already told the doctor you hurt. You didn't need a Latin to, to tell you that you hurt. But that's what they do. They diagnose this. gastritis. Ooh, sounds fancy. What does that mean? Gastro stomach itis, inflammation. Inflammation of the stomach. Okay, so you have gastritis. What's causing the gastritis? Don't know. Here's a drug. For what? They don't even know what's causing it. But here's a drug for gastritis. They're treating the symptom. This is what medicine's coming down to. Hi, Scott. Good to see you again. Thank you, sir, for joining every week. I really appreciate you. All right, so autoimmune disease. This is where you have elevated antibody, you have significant symptoms, labs, imaging, special study, all associated with significant, significant loss of function. This is medical diagnosis. This is where ND comes in and give you a drug and give you a diagnosis. We want to address it here or even here, but that's not what's done. They wait till the late stage. All medicine is about late stage treatment. It'd be like you have cancer, they wait till stage four cancer before they do something. Wouldn't you want to do something about the cancer when it's stage one? That's not what they do with autoimmune disease. They wait till stage three, which is a later stage. That's not smart, okay? Now, I want to talk quickly about what causes this autoimmune. There's a concept called self-tolerance. Okay, self-tolerance means your immune system's ability to differentiate self versus non-self tissue, right? So your immune system, from the day that you're born, is constantly learning, okay, oh, this is me, this is my own body, this is my thyroid, this is my muscle, this is me, don't, immune system, don't attack that, because that's self tissue, instead, attack the bacteria, oh, I got sick, right? So as you're, as you're young, you get sick, what's the purpose of getting sick when you're a kid? It's your immune system learning how to fight a battle. Is the immune system recognizing the bad guy for who they are and actually learning how to mount an attack and to protect your, your own body. This is a process of learning as you grow up. It's very important for, to have vaginal birth, natural childbirth, to get that first flora, the probiotic, from the mother's birth canal. And then you need to be breastfed to also get that. And you also have to, you know, as you get into, uh, and the mom actually have to have the healthy milk to also give that to the baby. And then also, as you grow uh, older, you get sick, and then you let, the, you let the body heal on its own without taking drugs to suppress the symptom. That's how you learn how to get healthy. So a lot of these kids, every time they get sick, guess what? We're throwing Tylenol to calm the fever. What is that doing about the virus? Nothing. You're just treating a symptom of the fever instead of letting the body to fight that. Or you get vaccinated, or you're eating processed food, right? Or you take antibiotic every time you have a ear infection. Guess what? That's just wiping out your body's ability to really learn all that stuff. And that's why people get sick. And that, what I'm saying is, that process of getting sick and getting breastfed and eating healthy food and, and healing on its own is how your body learns how to differentiate self and non-self tissue. And that's called self-tolerance. If you have really high self-tolerance of your immune system, that means your immune system is less likely to react against your own tissue. You're less likely to become autoimmune. So if that's really what determines that, then what causes this loss of cell tolerance? So what happens is you have things like uh, infections, toxins, heavy metal. You have things like uh, food, processed food. You have things like stress. You have things like hormonal responses. When I say hormone, I don't just mean like your sex hormones. I mean your insulin, your th thyroid hormone, your adrenal hormone. Like these hormones that have nothing to do with reproduction, like estrogen, progesterone. But the other hormones that regulate blood sugar, those hormones too. These things basically are like the fact of life, especially in America, stress, processed food, Processed food, heavy metal toxicities, to environmental toxins and pollutants like uh, pesticides, herbicides, and you know, uh, xenobiotics, and just all kinds of chemical in our environment, stealth infections or underlying infections, and hormonal fluctuations due to you know, eating poor sugary food, causing insulin surges, hormones. These things create this onslaught 
this insult on your immune system and lead to what's called immune dysregulation. Okay? So really it's environmental factor. Some people say, oh, genetic. How about genetics? Genetics is not environmental. Genetics is just what you what the cards that you dealt. But guess what? It's not about the cards that it's not about the cards that you're dealt. It's how you play the cards that you're dealt. You can't really change the cards that you're dealt. Okay? But you can change your environment. Certainly, you can change how you eat. You can change your exposure to different things by learning what's in your environment and not be exposed to them. Or support elimination of those toxins, identifying underlying infections and treat them appropriately, and managing stress. So these are things that you can modify. At the end of the day, if you're, why, what's the point of talking about something that you can't change? Right? We want to talk about things that we can change. Okay? This immune dysregulation lead to loss of cell tolerance because the self tolerance is that immune response and when you have immune dysregulation just being bombarded with so many things your body become hypersensitive and hyper reactive and what happens is it leads to loss of cell tolerance and that eventually leads lead to self or auto antibodies or auto antibodies meaning antibody against your own tissue so now you start developing antibody against the thyroid. That's called Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. Now you, now you have thyroid symptoms, right? Symptoms come after that because you have stage one, silent autoimmune, you develop antibody, and then you have symptom, and then you finally get diagnosed with a thyroid problem, Hashimoto's. But it started here, and it actually started here with these environmental. So you may be okay for like 20, 30, 40 years, and then boom, next thing you know, it's a straw that broke the camel's back. Your body can no longer tolerate and handle all these toxins anymore. It just break over time, right? So people say, oh, I was fine before, all of a sudden I developed. You didn't all of a sudden develop anything. You develop these chronic disease over time, okay? And most people don't think like that. They think, I'm sick today. What did I did today or yesterday? No, it's what has been going on to your, what you've been exposed to in the past 30, 40, however long you've been on this planet. That's what's leading to chronic illness, not what's today. Right? Anybody who's like, oh, this person had a heart attack today. Did that heart attack just happen today? Or did that heart attack be developing for the past 10, 20 years? Right? Self-antibody. And this leads to autoimmune reactivity, which leads to autoimmune disease. You see this progression here, from here to here. It looks just like this, right? Self-antibody which is stage one, autoimmune reactivity, which is stage two, and autoimmune disease, which is here. But it started here, okay? So that's where you can modify the disease by modifying your lifestyle habit and do appropriate treatment to get rid of these things. And when I say appropriate treatment, keep in mind that there, there's no drug <laughs> or surgery to get rid of like some of these things, like toxins. Now, if you have acute metal poisoning, like you just drank a glass of mercury today, well, yeah, that's it's acute poisoning. Call poison control. Go go to the hospital. They'll they'll pump your stomach. They'll do stuff, chelate the stuff out. That's acute poisoning. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is chronic acute, chronic long-term exposure, little by little. Every day you get exposed to stuff that builds up over time. And then one day you're sick, and your doctor blame it on aging, which is a complete inadequate understanding of how disease developed in the first place. It's not due to aging. It's due to the fact that you've been around long enough to accumulate all these junk. And your body needs to get rid of that junk. And there's no drug that's effectively get rid of the junk without causing some side effects. Okay? So appropriate treatment it means different things. So you know, in our office, we do things that are safe because you don't want to just move the toxin from one pile to another inside your body. Oh yeah, I detox it from your body. Guess what? All the toxin got detoxed and it's circulating and now moved to your brain. Now you develop symptom there or problem there. That's not a good thing, okay? So uh, this is how you develop autoimmune disease. Now, why is that important? Because the next thing I want to talk about is what are some of the things you can do about it besides getting rid of these toxin or exposures or infections? Well, one of the things that happens in autoimmune disease is that we can actually 
address it by using specific nutrients. Okay, so this is important to kind of draw it out. Okay, this board is dying. Okay, so the way it works is that it starts with you have this loop. Okay, so you have uh, what's called the when you initially have these toxins that bombard your immune system, what happens is a chemical is produced around this, this step right here. It's called NF-kappa-B. Okay? NF, sorry. NF-kappa-B. This is an inf inflammation chemical. Okay? And this basically triggers inflammation. And what happens is, what you can do to help support that is you actually have what's called a glutathione system. Now, in case you didn't know, glutathione is an intracellular antioxidant. Every single cell in your body produces glutathione, and this process happens like billions of times per second that your body produces glutathione. And glutathione is an intracellular antioxidant. Why is that important? Because by the fact that we breathe oxygen for energy, we become oxidized. Oxygen becomes reactive and causes oxidative stress or free radical formation. All that means to you is that, you know, uh, it becomes inflammatory, okay? The fact of breathing oxygen creates kind of like an internal cellular combustion. And that combustion creates some byproduct that's really harmful. So just by the fact of just staying alive and breathing oxygen, we're creating some harmful byproducts, kind of like exhaust fumes that's not very good for you. The body naturally produces these harmful exhaust fumes, but it also has ways to get rid of them as well. And that's why you take antioxidants, right? Antioxidant means antioxidation. And that oxidation is caused by the fact of you know, aerobic oxygen metabolism. So glutathione is one of those really important antioxidants to fight the effect of oxidation, which is aging. And every single cell in your body produces it, but only makes a certain amount. You have like a rate-limiting capacity. So you can only make so much glutathione in a day, and when you run out, then you're going to get in trouble because glutathione is kind of like the bodyguard that takes a bullet for you. So when your cell becomes attacked by these toxins, it's going to start to oxidize, it's going to get damaged. The glutathione protects the cell like a bodyguard. Take the bullet for it. Okay? And so the glutathione breaks and dies, or it breaks. It's a compound. It's not a, a live thing. It's not a cell. Glutathione is a compound that breaks apart when it takes the oxidation. But the body has the ability to recycle it and regenerate it. So your body's constantly regenerating and making glutathione. And glutathione production depends on sulfur compounds and acetylcysteine. So different, it's basically come from food. So you got to eat healthy to get the, the compounds to make glutathione. Now, the thing is, glutathione production, again, like I said, you have what's called reduced glutathione. This is also called GSH. This is the organic compound name for it. What happens is, as your body takes a bullet, this turns into GSS, GSSG, which is oxidized. Right? Because it takes a bullet. Remember antioxidant? So now that becomes oxidized, your body has an enzyme called glutathione reductase that actually will take this oxidized glutathione back into this reduced form, which your body will be able to use again. Okay? So why is that important? Because there's things that you can do to affect this right here. There's an enzyme, like I said, the glutathione reductase. You can affect the enzyme by getting this process becoming more efficient. So we have a product called, that I use called Hepato-GSH. You can find this product at neurometabolicsupplements.com. And I'll put that resource down at the bottom uh, or in the text section. Okay? Uh, Hepato-GSH is a product that contains compounds that support glutathione recycling, help your body become more efficient at making glutathione. And this is important because it just so happens glutathione help with this right here, this immune dysregulation. It supports T regulatory cells, okay? The other way you can get glutathione to increase the level is actually just take glutathione. Now there's different forms of glutathione. The old way was oral glutathione, taking reduced glutathione orally in, in, a, in a pill form or a powder form. And what happens is it didn't work very well because what they found is that when they did study and they draw blood to measure glutathione level and they have people take oral glutathione, reduced glutathione, they find that blood levels of glutathione did not rise very much. So therefore, it's not having much of an effect. So absorption is low. So then the evolution of that is they also have, you know, IV glutathione. You can get an injection IV of glutathione infused through an IV, which can increase glutathione level. You can also do it uh, nebulized. So using a nebulizer, breathe it in. 
But it's glue found smells like sulfur, so make sure how stink. So nobody likes to do that. It smells like rotten eggs, so nobody likes to do that. You can also do glue found through a suppository, and uh, you know, who wants to stick something up their butt, right? So that's not a favorite way to deliver it. And then uh, they came out with liposomal glutathione cream, a fat-based cream that you put on your skin, kind of like a hormone cream, but it delivers glutathione through the skin, which the absorption rate kind of depends. It's more for like local application. If you have like inflammation there, or we can rub it into the thyroid to help with thyroiditis if you have Hashimoto, that can work well for it. But for systemic absorption, that really depends on the person's how much fat they have, how much, you know, uh, what the metabolism is. So it's kind of varied. And then they came out with a, a different form of glutathione called S-acetoglutathione. The S-aceto form has been found to be very well absorbed orally. So before the reduced glutathione doesn't absorb well, well the S-acetoglutathione form absorbs really well. However, you may have to take a lot of it and uh, it's kind of expensive. So now what I'm gravitating toward in my office, I use what's called liposomal. Glutathione. Just write GSH. Liposomal glutathione. That's the preferred form for me, okay? Because it's in a in a liquid form, easy to take, and the liposomal forms tend to seem to be absorbed better. Okay, in a liquid form, it's also encased in little liposome spheres, little fat spheres that deliver the nutrient, able to get it through the GI tract and deliver it into the bloodstream. So liposomal glutathione is my preferred form right now. And uh, so what I do is I might use the hepato GSH to improve glutathione recycling because when you get that process to work better, it's a 24-7 thing. Your body's constantly making glutathione, it's doing it on its own. So we like that, okay? Because that's like for maintenance, for ongoing support, that's a really good way to do it. Liposomal glutathione is like if people come in, they're just starting care and they have a lot of symptoms, I might jump in and give them liposomal form just to raise glutathione level, right? Because what that's going to do is going to help them have more of this to help with this immune dysregulation. They're going to feel, they're going to help them with the immune system. However, this, this way, you have to take it all the time. Because you take it, your body's like, whoa, I got all this glutathione. Great, let's use it. But you use it up. Then you have to take it again, and you use it up. So it's kind of like you always have to take it. Which is fine if you need it short term just to kind of get, boost your system a little more. But then the hepato GSH will be on the back end to help you recycle it better. So there's different clinical applications how we use that. But just telling you that there's a way to improve autoimmune by not only addressing lifestyle factors, but also regulate the immune system that way, okay? So that's really important. Uh, and so that's all the time I have. So I just want to tell you that, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up. I want to say happy Thanksgiving to everyone if, we don't, if I don't see you before then. And, uh, you know, remember to make lifestyle changes. You know, Thanksgiving, Christmas comes every year. Doesn't mean like, oh, you know, it's so hard, I have to eat whatever. I mean, eat healthy, right? If you're supposed to be gluten-free, stay gluten-free. If you're supposed to be dairy-free, stay dairy-free. I mean, there, turkey doesn't have gluten or dairy. Uh, it's a stuffing may have, so you have to get this gluten-free stuffing. Or, you know, you can bring your own food to your family's house, and then, so that way you can stay on the eating plan. Because if you're just gonna eat whatever when it comes to whatever occasion, then you're never, never gonna be able to get there. It's all about lifestyle change. And eating and dietary things is certainly one of the most important things. So that's what we do with our patient. We teach them how to do that. Uh, myself and my nutritionist help patients to learn how to do this for the rest of their life. Because if you can get off the diet, then it's, it's not what you should need to do, right? It has to be a lifestyle change where that's just what you do going forward. Uh, also, I want to tell you that um, we have a workshop next uh, Tuesday, Thyroid Solution Workshop. If you haven't been to that, I highly encourage you to come to that because it's going to teach you the underlying root cause of thyroid disease, which is mostly autoimmune. And also on Wednesday, next Wednesday at 5 o'clock, we have what's called the Autoimmune Solution Workshop. Both of these workshops at no cost to you. And what I do is I just give you as much content as possible, just like this, just like my shows. But I kind of put it together in the big picture for you, kind of knit all the different videos together so it's like one cohesive theme to help you understand it better and give you practical tips that you can help yourself. And uh, so if you haven't been to it, I highly recommend you come. You can register by calling 480-988-6269 or register online at askdrkhan.com slash thyroid. For the autoimmune workshop, you go to azautoimmunedoctor.com. I'm gonna put all those links uh, on the, uh, in the post section, okay, in the, the text section. So you can click on it and register online or by calling our office. If you've already been to the workshop and you thought it was helpful, you know, tell someone about it. Tell someone to come to the workshop and learn what they can do 
with their health. Okay, so I highly would encourage you to do that. Please share this video with other people. I want to say happy Thanksgiving. Give me some thumbs and hearts if you felt like this was helpful. Give you some additional information that's uh, going to help you get well and stay well. Give me some thumbs and hearts. You see that? Okay, great. Awesome. Now, also, uh, like I said, this show is recorded for you, and it'll be posted on our blog at AskDrTan.com. We're also uh, on Snapchat. You'll be able to see snippets of this, so you can have people follow us on Snapchat at AskDrTan. And also, uh, should we talk about the Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Thanksgiving, we have, uh, if you go to our store, NeuralMetabolicSupplements.com, we have a Black Friday sale. Okay, so basically just try to give you an opportunity to purchase these products and kits to help with leaky gut, to help with supporting autoimmune. The product, liposomal glutathione, is called Optimal Liposomal Glutathione. And then the product called Hepato GSH. You can find it at NeuralMetabolicSupplements.com. Like I said, I'll put that link up in the, uh, in the post. You can click on it, and then uh, there's a code for uh, the Black Friday sale. You know what it is? Black Just Black Friday. Type in Black Friday. This will only be good for... Four days, okay, so basically through Sunday, I think. So you can purchase these products at a discount, okay? So feel free to use the code Black Friday at our website at neurometabolicsupplements.com. That's our online store where I carry these products that I use in my office with my patient that gets me, you know, the, my patient's life-changing results. We have over 100 video testimonials on our website. Just go check it out. See what we're able to do with proper nutrition, proper mindset and approach to health, addressing the root cause, it's, it's, a, it's a big piece of the puzzle, okay? But it's a big puzzle with many pieces. The product is just but one small piece. Just taking the product without eating healthy doesn't help. Okay, so look at our website. Uh, we also have a gut repair program you can uh, opt into at askdrcon slash the gut repair. So all these resources for you. Again, just trying to help you. Uh, so hope this helps you, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next Monday at 1230 for the Ask Dr. Khan Show. Thank you. Have a great, th happy, uh, have a great Thanksgiving. Yeah.